Hello again and welcome to another edition of Lab Matters, a webcast from Kaspersky Lab. My guest today is Ruhl Schoenberg, one of the senior researchers in Kaspersky's global research and analysis team. And Ruhl, we're here today to talk about digital certificates and the mm -hmm. big story. Obviously, is the uh, certificate authority breach at DigiNotar. Uh, try to simplify it for the end, end user audience that doesn't understand SSL and how everything works. In a real world scenario, what does it mean for the average mom and pop end users or the average business? What exactly uh, does this breach mean? What are the ramifications for them? Right, so to look at the background of how we use SSL on a day-to-day -day consumer basis, mm -hmm. we basically just have to think about online banking. When you go to your favorite bank and you see uh, the HTTPS and you mm -hmm. see the padlock and all that stuff, then that padlock uh, tells you that this uh, certificate has been issued by a certain certificate authority to this particular website. And right. if everything is, is, is correct, then everything is fine. That transaction is somewhat trusted. Right, that's a trusted transaction, and if something is wrong with the certificate, the browser will be very strong in saying you should not proceed with uh, with this website. You should not do anything here. Right. In this and case, in this case, we have uh, rogue certificates. So everything seems fine when you go to right. Gmail.com, for instance. It's it's a rogue certificate, but it, in many it's actually a legitimate certificate issued by a legitimate certificate authority because of the breach on that backend. Right. Exactly. So while well, everything seems fine, in reality you are... There's a guy sitting in the middle listening right. to everything happening. It's, as it's, as it's as a it. massive man in the middle. Right. And can you just fill in a little bit of the background? What happened? When did it happen? And do we know how it happened? So just talk, me a, little, talk a little bit about what happened and if we know how it happened. Well, right now the exact details about how it happened aren't public yet and mm -hmm. it's not entirely sure if you will actually know all right. those details. Uh, DigiNotar promised to release the interim report to uh, the, the public, but they didn't actually promise to show us the final report, so right. that may forever remain a mystery. What we do know, though, is that uh, th this attack started in, in the beginning of July, and mm -hmm. well, uh, only when somebody went to one of Google's support forums on, on the 28th of July did we actually see this attack. And the, the world actually right. became uh, aware of it. And the big news came out of because it was uh, a real Google.com certificate for Google.com properties, but there were some additional uh, certificates involved. There, there were a additional lot targets. Uh, right, and that only uh, those targets only were made public uh, after mm -hmm. the, the audit report. What are some so of the big names in that? Uh, Facebook.com, Twitter.com. Uh, other uh, targets were uh, CIA.gov, but only the website, so right. not entirely sure what, what the motive right. was there. Uh, Mossad, uh, MI6, mm -hmm. and, and more. And those names and, and the extent and the sophistication of this and, and just the, the, the wide-ranging ramifications of this suggest in some cases maybe nation-state attackers may be uh, an attack at a very high level. Is this something you agree with? What is? I, I definitely agree with that because when you look at the domains and some of the other domains, for instance, uh, involve uh, Tor, which is an anonymity service, right. uh, LogMeIn, which is an, a VPN service. Right. So uh, somebody was really out to get into encrypted communications. To, to, right. to, to it's, it's an intelligence operations, really. So, and, and certainly when you realize that there are 300,000 or so IPs involved in this attack, right. then it's not somebody sitting in their basement who actually right, right. has the, the, the horsepower to, to do that this kind of stuff. This is someone with resources right. uh, who is highly organized and, and clearly know what they're trying to listen for. The, there are no banks uh, which are targeted. It's, right. it's all really intelligent. So that it, all, the, it all points towards a nation state backed right. attack. How do we minimize the damage from this type of attack in the future? Do you expect in a year from now we'll still be talking about this? Because this is the second major one. We had Komodo before, now mm -hmm. DigiNotar. Uh, do you expect certificate authorities to beef up their own infrastructure to stop things? Or do you expect uh, the change to come from the browser makers in terms of how they treat well, uh, certificates? We, we have just seen Mozilla announce that they want all CAs to report to them on mm -hmm. their security. Uh, w within one week, right. so probably we'll see the results by the time uh, right. th th this is being uh, being released. Mm -hmm. So that will be very interesting. But wh when we, we when we look at this CA problem, 
uh, we, we can see that attackers might have different motives to attack CAs. So maybe you could argue somebody wants to attack a CA because they want to go after a financial organization or right, something right. like that. Uh, so far, the breaches we have seen this year, they have all been towards intelligence purposes, and we've seen the same domains uh, involved. Uh, same domains involved. So uh, actually, when we go back to how this uh, breach or Mm -hmm. This breach was initially discovered. What triggered it all was, was Google Chrome, really. Google Chrome has a, a hard-coded list of certificates that belong to Google.com. And, and, and the Chrome browser detected, right. hey, I'm, I'm seeing a certificate here for Google.com, though valid. It's not in my list of trusted certificates. And that flagged. Uh, and that was flagged. So we can f fix this problem, at least from the intelligence point of view, if we simply have all the browser makers adopt this approach. But that's only because they were looking for Google.com certificates. I mean, what if, what if Google.com was not involved in this? Right. So, so that's why we need the, the top 10 or so most likely target the domains in, in an intelligence To be hard-coded into every browser. Right. How do you read the response from the browser makers? Because they've been pretty harsh in, in, on the back end in mm -hmm. terms of just basically cutting off the knees. Uh, did you know to our certifi uh, as a certificate authority, how do you read their response? And do you think it could have been better? And how do you recommend we go forward well, dealing with these? It's, it's a little bit tough because as I'm an AV guy, right, I think signature updates and I think maybe an hour or so, or right. a few, few hours <laughs> for response time. Yeah, we, we see days and um, I, I guess it's a bit different here because you have a lot of trusted websites that are suddenly, well, they are suddenly broken. Right. So, so it's very tough. We, you need to give people some time for remediation. But w when we look at the situation in the Netherlands, even those few days didn't fix that much. Right, right. So uh, when we look at the different browser vendors, responses, then um, two really come to mind. One is, where is Apple? We haven't heard anything from them. Which right, so Safari I, is still... Right, Safari is still vulnerable, the, and mm -hmm. it's, it's completely unacceptable from my point of view to, com to keep right. complete radio silence. And the other thing is smartphones. There's a browser on every smartphone. So have we seen any action there at all? Uh, we, we're, we're not sure. I, I, I have read some reports about um, uh, Android being popular in, mm -hmm. for instance, uh, Iran, which which was the target in, mm -hmm. the, in this particular case. So, uh, the, and the bigger thing with smartphones is that it's actually the carrier uh, which sets the time by default. So, revocation dates become meaningless. Right, right. So, even when a certificate is revoked or is expires on a particular date. Right, the carrier has more, all the control. On right, the so they can they set a random date in, in the past. So, in, in that regard, really, uh, Google has been very bipolar, mm -hmm. if, if you will, with, right. with Chrome really in terms being, of being and really, really good on the Chrome side, but mm -hmm. terrible on the Android side. Right, and Android.com was actually one of the targeted domains as well. Mm -hmm. So, so it's, it's very strange. Very strange indeed. What happens next? That, that's a very good question. I, I do hope that the browser makers will implement this a list of top 10 or top 20 Hard domains, mm -hmm. and, and then we can basically stop these kind of attacks from happening and basically take away the motivation from that aspect to hack any CA. Right. Um, Do you expect uh, uh, any sort of additional changes on the certificate authority side? It, it's, it's hard to imagine, really. We see some, some good ideas coming mm -hmm. from, let's say, Moxie Martin Spike, say, right. convergence, uh, and, and basically having that, that a... That direction is where you need to go. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a peer-to-peer -peer review of... Uh, mm -hmm. Do you think that, do you agree with Moxie that perhaps the entire SSL infrastructure is irrevocably broken? And oh, oh I, I, I completely agree, but I think we have some, some other issues, some, some mm -hmm. other fundamentals of the internet which are completely broken. So uh, yeah. if you really want to start PKI again, does that mean we should start right, a new right, internet? Right. It's so it's just we're, we're forced to live in, in, in this semi-broken world and kind of Right. operate it's within these boundaries. It's when you look at email, right? When you get that email from Facebook.com or Amazon, you, you have no idea if it's, right, it's really right, them right. or if it's the, the right. those, those guys again who sent you that email every day. And, and we live with that. And I, I guess with certificates, we're, we're taking it to a whole new, more scary level. Do you think there's anything that can be done on the security vendor side, anti-malware vendor side to deal with perhaps detect uh, any sort of rogue certificate, any sort of man in the middle it, it, listening? Uh, what we actually have done um, in our some of our products is mm -hmm. a 
we have a special online banking mode. And uh, at that point, our product actually contacts the cloud to basically only use whitelisted IP addresses that are associated with banks. Right. So, th so that's, that, a right? that, that, mm -hmm. that's a mitigation. That's a mitigation, but but o overall, it's it's, it's going to be very tough. Right. Uh, recently, Facebook has been alternating certificates, um, which are right. being used on Facebook.com. So if you want to detect a, a sudden change in the use certificate, mm -hmm. you're you're going to have problems right. there. Other than nothing, what can end users do? <laughs> uh, that's a very good question. Basically, and my mom and dad can basically do nothing. They're basically dependent on the technology to work as it's advertised. Is uh, there right. anything the end user can do to mitigate uh, risk, limit exposure, limit damage? What? Um, I, I really think that they are dependent on the technology first and foremost. Mm -hmm. uh, what we have seen, though, is that uh, initially, when this breach uh, became public, some people were saying, just ignore the certificate error. And that's something people really should never, ever be doing. Mm -hmm. And that needs, that needs to be something which is also communicated very clearly towards governments who may mm -hmm. have some involvement in these CAs so that they understand the severity of, of, of mm -hmm. things so that when we encounter these issues, we, we have proper, proper measures instead. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise, there is... Currently, not a whole lot right. we can do. I expect we'll be having this conversation a year from now and nothing much will change. But thank you very much, Rul. And thank you for watching another edition of Lab Matters, a webcast from Kaspersky Lab. You can check some additional webcasts at youtube.com slash Kaspersky.